Hello, in this video, we are going to just run through the four equations that you have learned in the chapter. So you can treat this kind of like a summary slash really short clip to help jog your memory. So the first thing you encountered in this topic, right, is uh, about Newton's law of gravitation. Okay, so you have to learn how to write the law. I'm not going to write the law in its entirety. I will just write out the equation for you, which is uh, the attractive force between two point masses is directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of their separation. Do not forget to mention the term point mass. So now to kick out the proportionality sign, you will insert the gravitational constant g. So I will write out the equation there for you, okay, where you have the uh, f is g m m over r square. This equation is not given to you. All right, so when we have force, we definitely has a, have a force field. And to represent how strong that field is, this is gravitational field strength, which is known as force per unit mass. Nah, F equal mg, g equal to F over m. Okay, so both of these are actually vectors. Law. Huh? All right, and because they are both vectors, uh, you should uh, always think about direction, especially if there are two planets or two satellites, because that will actually influence the way you think about the values okay so when we divide by the mass uh, one of the m will drop away so if i want to measure the field strength of one i will divide by the mass of two okay so they are both vectors as mentioned so you drop one of the m what is left is gm over r square so you should know how to sketch the graph okay the graph for a single point mass you can find from the notes is pretty straightforward it's just a one over r square shape but I just want to draw the slightly more complicated one when there are two, let's say there are two identical planets, lah, you can see. So you know that's in the middle, right at the midpoint, definitely the forces will cancel out. Lor. So here your net force is zero. So this is actually your x-intercept. Alright, so if we look at, if you want to draw the forces, you get that kind of like inflection point or sigmoid shape. Um, you can refer to the example discussion uh, for gravitational field strength. I also draw a graph of a similar shape, but that was between the moon and the earth. All right. So the middle there is an inflection point. Lah, but we're not too bothered about that. Just to get the basic shape out of the way. Okay. All right. So if the gravitational force have that shape, then the gravitational field strength should also have the shape. So when the middle or the net force is zero, so then the gravitational field strength should also be zero. Ah. You will get the exact same shape. Okay, but of course the magnitudes will be different ah, because you are dealing with a different equation. What? Okay, so they are supposed to be symmetrical. Supposed to be. I'll try. Anyway, near the Earth's surface is 9.81. On the other, ghost planet is negative 9.81. Okay, that's assuming that they'll have two planets. Lah. Two planet Earth. Anyway, if you watch the bonus video, you will know that inside the uh, Earth's surface, okay, when you tunnel into the Earth, G is actually proportional to the distance. Okay, so that's why you get a straight line. Okay, so inside the planet Earth is a kind of like a special case. Lah. All right, moving on, we are going to now look at potential energy. Now, when it comes to potential energy, uh, if you remember, right, work done is actually area under the FX graph. So to find area under the fx graph, we would then integrate your gravitational force with respect to the distance r. Okay, so that integration uh, was, uh, you have, Miss Ellie has run you through that integration already. So I'm just going to briefly note it down here. But if you think about integrating 1 over r square, you will get negative 1 over r. That's why the gravitational potential energy u is negative g m1 m2 over r. Okay, now sometimes they will use U to represent potential energy. Sometimes they use EP. Follow the question. Lah. But you should know the definition. So the definition for this is work done in bringing an object or a mass from infinity to a point in a gravitational field. If you're talking about gravitational potential, instead of gravitational potential energy, then it's work done per unit mass. Okay, the whole idea of this per unit mass, right? is to allow us to know, okay, this planet on its own, how much energy do I need for every kilogram that I am to approach the planet? 
just like for the gravitational field strength, how much force will I experience for every kilogram that I am? Okay. Yeah, it's like price per curry puff. Lah. That's what I like to tell my student. Price per curry puff. All right. So here, you will divide by M and uh, you will get negative GM over R squared. Don't, sorry, over R. Now this equation they give you, uh, the potential equation they give you. Very nice, right? But if you know the relationship, you should easily be able to write out the other four. Okay. Uh, another thing to note, sometimes they can ask you to explain why is it always negative. Okay, so I've gone through the explanation with you already. So if you notice, right, when you go from left to right, it is uh, differentiating, uh, sorry, integrating. So when you go right back to left, you'll be uh, differentiating. Both energy and potential is scalars. So because they are scalar, right, we don't really need to uh, consider the direction. We will just sum up the graphs, okay? So if you are wondering why I emphasize on this graph, is because this is a easier topic because it's always attractive. Later, when we talk about electric fields, we will go through the four pillars of field study again. Force, field strength, potential energy, potential. Okay, so as long as you know how, the, how these four things are related, you are pretty much set to use them. Just because you know doesn't mean that you can use. Okay, so do more examples because in electric fields we will go through this process all over again starting from force and ending with potential all right so um so yeah actually uh this page is enough to solve all the questions in the chapter uh, provided you know the concepts uh and also a small some small proofs here and there okay so uh moving on i am going to sketch the graph between uh two identical planets Okay, and I will sketch the graph of the potential energy and also the graph of gravitational potential. Okay, potential energy and gravitational potential. If you're wondering why this is a pure voiceover without me in the camera, it's because I don't think the screen got placed. Lah, okay, that I need to hide away from you again. All right, so if you remember in the lecture video, Miss Ellie has shown you this simulation. You can find the gravitational potential curve. Okay, now I've adjusted the mass so that they are same mass. So you can see right in the middle is where the turning point is. Nah, 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 nah. It's a turning point. Uh. It's not all flat. Uh. It's just a very gradual turning point. I will draw something that is a bit more like the drawing that is in the task uh, after you study the gravitational potential chapter. Okay, which is which looks a bit more curvy. But by right, it should look a bit more of like a bowl shape. Okay, it's not a quadratic curve, ah. Uh. Mm -hmm. But it looks like an inverted U, lah. And the reason why we draw like this is because, uh, wherever you are, if let's say you are at the midpoint, it's as if you are at the top of a hill and you cannot roll anywhere. Net force zero, no? At the midpoint, and then if you are at the sides, let's say you are closer to one planet, you will fall towards it, lah. Alright, so these are the graphs. Uh, you can find the handout in your OneNote. Uh, I will link the PDF below. And uh, good luck with your studies in gravitational field. See you next time. Bye-bye.